recording. Hey guys, Corey Allen here. I'm with my buddy, Muskie Fishing. Uh, we're taking a little break. I'm going to talk to you about something I found at the Bargain Bend at Fleet Farm, which is like a Toys R Us for me. We don't have shops like that where I'm from. Uh, this was a little something in the Bargain Bend called Muskie Bacon. And I'd seen these before. A little bit closer. Basically, it's just kind of like a soft plastic tail molded around a treble hook that you can replace any given hook on a bait. But the secret to these is, and part of the reason I think they found their way to the bargain bin was because I think people are expecting this to impart action instead of be a complimentary thing to a bait with action. That's just my guess. So when you're dealing with something like this, they come in two sizes. They come in the small size like this and this bigger size. But I think the thing that probably a lot of people were doing was they were putting it on a bait and expecting it to augment the bait. Really all it kind of does is nerf the bait as far as the action's a little bit, but it can complement it depending on what the action is. So for instance, I'm going to use a couple examples. This is a little Salmo pike jerk bait. So basically it just kind of darts through the water. It's not got a really an inherent action to it. When you throw this on it, it actually puts a little bit of a break. It's kind of like putting a, uh, a drift sock out the back. So it has a little bit more drag, but then the inherent super darting action of it, it dampens it a little bit, but it actually gives you a little bit more control. So I'll show you what that does. So normally that bait would just be kind of doing that. But they get a little squirrely, you wouldn't be able to give it as much energy. So when you put this on the back and you can tap it, you can kind of see how that gives it just a little bit more animation in the back. Obviously, honestly, with the contrast, it gives me even a little bit more of a target fit. I like it a lot because this thing really wants to get janky and it gives a lot of energy. If it really like taps, which is fine. But I threw this on it. I really like it, especially the fact that it's not fixed to the body of the bait, but it's on the split ring, which is an auxiliary hook. So that works really well with that. The smaller ones are cool. If you're looking for something to add to a bait like that to give it a little bit more animation, a little bit more contrast, a little bit more, I mean, honestly, what it lets you do is impart a little bit more energy to it because it's not going to be all thrown at the bait itself. It's going to be able to take some of it in the back. Let me show you what it could do with a big one. So you're dealing with the big stuff, like this big tail. What you're gonna have to think about is this is gonna be a lot more drag. It's gonna dampen the action a little bit. So you need a bait that has a lot of inherent action. It's pretty big. This is an H2O 10 inch shallow cranky nitro. I'm gonna throw this on here for a second and just show you. A bait like this with a big tail on the back, you're not gonna find too many baits you can put the big tail on and actually get anything out of it twitching. But you take this, See how the tail wags just behind? It's basically making it have the same kind of mechanics as a shallow invader. I'll talk a little bit about that. One of the reasons I think the shallow invader is such an effective bait is it has an erratic action to the body, but then that tail in the back kind of dampens the lateral line signature, so it makes it a little less intrusive for the fish on the lateral line. They don't have a lot of good fish. It's actually absolutely powerful for the shallow invader. And I'm pretty convinced a lot of it has to do with the tail. So if you can imagine this bait now, imagine it without the tail on. You get this big hunk of hard plastic just wrecking the water, leaving a huge wake, which is fine if you want to leave like a really good profile in the water. But the cool thing is when you add that tail to the back, it's almost kind of like this thing's going through making a mess in the water column with the lateral line wake signature. And then the tail's just kind of sweeping up behind it, so it makes it a little less intrusive. I think it actually makes it to where it's a little bit more palatable to fish when they're not quite as active. But if you put that on a bait that's not got a lot of inherent action to it, it's going to kill it. With that big tail like that, you can tell on a bait that's already got a lot of inherent action, you can troll the crap out of that too. That's an excellent slow trolling bait, especially if you've got the weights in so it's not as buoyant with the little weight screws in the head. Let me show you one more neat thing about this too. Give me a second. Because like I said, a lot of the times when you're fishing with baits like that, you want something that either has a lot of action or not a lot of inherent action, meaning it's not going to go like this. If it just has a little bit of an action to it, that'll kill it in a heartbeat. But it complements certain baits really well. Let me show you a bait that complements really well. This is a quiet pill, one of my favorite gliders by Will Carpenter. And I was screwing around with this a little bit earlier with the tail. The big tail absolutely killed it. 
absolutely kills the action by pulling a stick through the water. If you're on the little tail, you know, momento. I've only got one of the little tails on board, so I gotta switch out. The little tail gives it just a little bit more drag. But it almost kind of looks like a rudder. Now because it's not shrink wrapped rubber, that kind of kills it a little bit. But just because it's got a little bit of leeway with it with that split ring, it's kind of neat. And kind of like the twitch bait but in a glider action, it lets you give it, yeah, it lets you give it a little bit more home. You have to give it a little bit more to, of a kick to turn. You see how that tail just kind of helps direct it? It doesn't force it because it's not fixed. But once it lines back up with the bait, it allows it to glide a little bit better. I don't think that would work on some baits as well. Some of these bigger gliders, though, you see that don't have a swirly tail, I would definitely pick up some of these musky bakings like this. That adds an incredible effect to that. Especially when fishing in shallow rivers and you just want it to hang. I don't know if you can see that. It actually makes it turn a little bit tighter. And just the way it just kind of slinks back behind the bait adds a really nice effect to it. Like I said, I think that's the big reason they were probably sitting in the bargain bin is because I don't think a lot of people probably realize the applications for this bait or they like going on a bucktail or normal crankbait. Like I said, it kill a lot of crankbait. Even the small ones. Probably looking for something more like a big square bill or just a really big hard thumping trolling bait. I imagine it would be an excellent application for big trolling baits. Some of Lydio's stuff. Don't think a Jake would take it. We'll play around, but definitely a big glider like this. And that little pull bait. Any dive and rise without a tail on the back would be an excellent application for that. But yeah, so check those out. It's called musky bacon. I imagine they're on sale in the bargain bin anywhere you can find them. I found mine at Fleet Farm. But uh, they come in through the si come in through sizes. Lots of the different colors, or at least three. And uh, try those out on your own little baits. See what you think. Like, you know, experiment. But I would definitely start with some of the uh, recommend or, uh, recommendations I gave first. Because they can really, really, really change the mechanics of a bait if you know which bait to put it on. Alright guys, we're going to try to catch fish. See you later.